tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Are you ready? TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everyone, and welcome to AfterBuzz TV's recap show for Sailor Moon Crystal. I am Kaori Takei, and with me, I've got the lovely Megan Salinas. Hey there. And we are the two-woman crew, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we are going to be recapping Act 11, Reunion and Dimion, and overall the thoughts before we get into it. I, I'm kind of torn because I remember in the... You know, I hate to be the one person on this panel that's always going, well, in the original. But yeah, it's okay. In the original, this particular arc went on way too long. Like, uh -huh. they, they dragged out this particular story arc of Endymion being evil. They dragged it out for way too long, and it was agonizing. On the flip side of that, it was still good. Like, it kind of, it like, it was, it was agonizing, but, you know, it was... I remember really enjoying it. It lasted way too long, but I remember being really <laughs> invested. I had a hard time getting invested in this one in particular. I, okay. I kind of felt a little underwhelmed for the execution this time around. Okay. I don't know why. Well, I kind of agree with you there. It, it kind of just erupted very quickly into just who he, the evil Endymion and... Well... Uh, I, it wasn't even so much that it went quickly because that's been this entire series yeah, has been going quick, quick, true. quick. So I don't really mind that too much. But when when it happened in the original show, I really got the sense this was evil. Like mm -hmm. there was, it felt a lot darker. And like when when you saw Tuxedo Mask doing all these evil things, but you could still see a glimmer of him still in there. Like it was, it was definitely emotional. It was emotionally resonant. This one, it was like, what did evil tuxedo mask do besides hang out by an arcade? He was just evil. He had red eyes, and he, he made. He was just kind terrible. of a jerk. Yeah, it was, was like you didn't really turn him evil. You just kind of turned him into a douchebag who yeah. hangs out in an arcade. Yeah, it was. It was supposed to be pretty dark at, um, act, and I was looking forward to this one. I'm with you. I was a little underwhelmed. However, overall, I think that what this one is supposed to really do is lead up to what's going to happen in the next episode. Yeah, um, and, and that's the thing. I like the brainwashing trope. Mm -hmm. I like when somebody, you know, I like the tropes where it's like somebody's being controlled and, you know, mind control and all that stuff. I like that stuff uh, because I think it's a good source of drama. But I just felt, I don't know, something didn't stick with this one. Maybe, I mean, obviously, yeah, um, these acts move on super fast and they are very um, parallel to the manga. But maybe it's just, you know, they had to they had to kind of put this in there because it's parallel to the manga. And Yeah, and I understand that. And the manga, though, very entertaining. It's, it's, it's a little dated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I... I'm excited that you know they're doing they're they're so close. Oh to yeah, it, no, it, it's definitely a good thing, and there are definitely but there are definitely going to be some things that were good about the original show mm -hmm. that aren't going to come through because those themselves were departures from the original manga. Yeah. Well, that being said, I, I looked at um, the time. I usually look at how long the show the episode is going to last. This one had an extra two minutes, and I was kind of wondering, why does this have an extra two minutes? And then I noticed that the transformations were completely glorified in this episode, and I completely appreciate that, you know? <laughs> I, except for Sailor Jupiter. She's I getting was going to say, for, <laughs> for a moment, I thought we were going to get all of their transformations, yeah. which would have been the only time that they had all gone through each and every one of the transformation sequences in full, but Sailor Jupiter was knocked out, so we didn't even necessarily get that. Yeah, we didn't. And I was wondering, where the hell is Artemis? <laughs> yeah. It's weird, right? Because he's in the manga hanging out with Luna, like, sitting there. Yeah, kinda... no. Once once they, like, <laughs> once Sailor Venus came in, like, he and 
um, he and Luna were inseparable after yeah, that, Yeah, so I'm just kind of curious. What? Did they do the white cat? They didn't want to draw him in there or <laughs> what? You know, but... Was he off researching something? I don't no, know. It's just, I mean, he's obviously not in the control room. Where did he go? <laughs> Drinking milk right now or what? Anyway, so let's uh, talk more about this episode. It starts off um, with the emphasis in the beginning of how much Usagi has come to love Luna. Luna's trying to sit there and help her because she wakes up from a bad dream, reaching out to Endymion, you know, failing, and then she actually... Is, accidentally steps on Luna or drops her or something I forget um and Luna woke her up and so I think Usagi like sat yes, up really quickly that. and she sat up and hurt Usagi she picks I mean Luna and then she picks her up and goes I'm sorry I love you which was so cute so I think they were really trying to emphasize how much um Luna and Sailor Moon have gone gone close to each other and how much they depend on each other and rely on each other and how they're partners which sets up what happens at the end and I think this is something that, um, especially uh, something that always shown through in the original Japanese, something that always really shown through, but not necessarily something that always came across in the English dub, was just how innocent and kind of pure Usagi really is. Because she is, she is very selfish, you know, she is very self-centered and very mm. immature, but she's very innocent and very loving. And that's something that this ep episode really does kind of focus on, especially there at the very beginning. And that's something that this series as a whole is mm -hmm. really focusing on too, because no matter what, she always seems to be able to bring the best out of other people around her because she is an innocent. Yeah. And because she does have a pure heart. Yeah, and I, I look at her completely different now too. From act one all the way and just 10 acts later, for me, she's a completely different girl, you know? Obviously she's been through a lot and a lot has been revealed to her and it's probably causes her to just think differently and start holding things in you know mm -hmm. in the beginning she's all wild and oh, I'm late for class and now she's a lot more diligent and disciplined yeah she's still very young and still very naive and still very innocent but there's definitely a weight that is mm -hmm. now on her shoulders yeah. and it's ever present and she might still be smiling but there's definitely a sadness in that smile now whereas before she was just kind of happy and oblivious yep. now she knows and you can never go back after that that is what happens when you fall in love and lose it <laughs> <laughs> you can never go back to that innocence, you know. Aww. Aww, sad. <laughs> it's too real. Yeah, it's too it's real. Move way on. Way too real. <laughs> so, uh, in the meantime, we have Tuxedo Mask, aka Endymion, come back, pretend to be Endo. Huh? Oh, funny how close his name is to his <laughs> actual prince name. Um, and he, you know, has these red hypnotizing eyes, and he's ready to do some damage. And he hypnotizes, um, I forgot the, the arcade clerk's guy's name. Uh, Fur Him. Furu? Uh, uh, Furu-chan? Or... Something. You're I very can never close. remember. You're very close. Um, I always just think, I know it's wrong, but he's Andrew to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, classic Andrew <laughs> basically becomes his best friend friend or is hypnotized Which, I feel that really guy. bad for that endo guy you yeah. know his actual best friend endo because you know tuxedo mask was basically like hey buzz off and he's yeah. like okay like do you think he just kept walking he, <laughs> not knowing like, who he was where what am I doing here is what he said he just walked away and we don't know what happened to him yeah <laughs> strange <laughs> and that's you know this poor guy's best friend and now he possibly is wandering around Tokyo with no memory of who he is or what he's doing. Yeah, that's true. Well, maybe um, the girl that looks kind of like Beryl, the nice girl. The girl with the pink hair? Yeah, she yeah. kind of like Beryl. Um, maybe she'll go find him because she noticed he was missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the only one that's like, hey, that guy who's actually your best friend, where did he go? Yeah, he, yeah exactly. And that was kind of cool. I liked how they, they emphasized um, when she had carried her textbook of gems all the four you know yeah i i loved I, it i thought it was hilarious um because it's super on the nose mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like okay no that's kind of cool yeah it's yeah. really cool <laughs> i thought it was super cool and i like how uh endo fake endo says oh yeah i have those i have home. them all <laughs> it was amazing i was like yes you do <laughs> So it was good. pretty spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it it was I I loved it, 
the show is not subtle in no. any way, shape, or form. It is not subtle. Well, I think I think it goes under the premise that and most people who are watching it are not first timers into the show, so mm-hmm. they're just like, why the f not? Let's just. I get actually into it. do kind of feel bad because I I I know it sounds weird, but I think there are people who are watching it for the first time well, and they've them. never. That's which, awesome. Like when we got to episode ten, their minds were blown. Yeah, like they had no idea any of that was coming, and so apparently Tumblr went a little nuts because for people who, if this is your first time going through the series, that is a lot of information to just drop on them. I know, it's a big part of me that thinks you are so lucky to be going through this the first time around because no, there's nothing like your first. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so. Anyway, we all know that the control, the control room is underneath the Sailor Moon, um, excuse me, Sailor Venus, Sailor V arcade game, which is kind of weird, but it's underneath <laughs> there and Endymion is hanging, da- hanging out, hoping to find out where it is, even though he's right there and he's sitting there trying to hypnotize everybody, including Usagi. I thought it was very interesting that... Um... That first of all, that they knew exactly where the control center was to begin with. Mm-hmm. I I don't remember if that had been revealed to them at some point, but yeah, they knew exactly where it was. Wait, who are you talking about? The the, the bad guys. The bad guys. I, well, he was looking for it, from what I understood. He was looking for it, couldn't find it, and then the Sailor Jupiter came in and said, "Hey, watch out for my girl," <laughs> whatever, trying to back her up, and he hypnotized her. I think it's really funny that somebody who's been hypnotized is using hypnotism to you know to take control of other people good point <laughs> good point well he's just evil he's like a evil droid person <laughs> now so yeah i think that sailor jupiter is the one that actually led him there oh no definitely that's that's definitely what happened i just why go there to begin with like unless they already knew that that's the control true. center was oh, down there oh i see what you're saying like why go to the arcade to begin with mm-hmm. well i think i would just guess that he probably instinctively knows that that's pretty much where you're going to find Usagi because we know well, yeah, that's where I, you're going to find I her. I guess that makes sense too if he's retaining some of his memories from, from before then he knows where Usagi and her friends are mm-hmm. always hanging out and he knows that Usagi is Sailor Moon. So of course if that's where they're always hanging out then that's probably where their little base of operations yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that makes that's more sense probably to me. what happens. Anyways, that's where a lot of things happen in, the, in that little arcade <laughs> an arcade like that um sailor moon or usagi is completely mesmerized but confused because it looks just like her man but she knows that he's not in this world at this moment so mm-hmm. she's kind of hesitant but she doesn't want to not believe that he's back at the same time uh, you know what i think this is what was throwing me off about mm-hmm. this particular episode because sailor moon is so inactive when it comes to because I feel like in the other series, if she saw him, she would have just gone straight for him. Like, that's him. I know it's him. Even if it's not, if he's not acting like himself, it is him. What have they done to mm-hmm. him? And here, she just seems kind of befuddled, even up until the end where they are fighting him. She's still like, why are you fighting Tuxedo yeah, Mask? I didn't it's like because that part. he's been brainwashed. <laughs> I totally, that's something that that bothered me was they all turned and she was just still standing there. I understand mm-hmm. that she's kind of helpless and confused, but it took her cat to get a beating. Yeah, I was not a fan of that show. That, that part, was not cool. Nah, I see that. See little Luna get tossed. I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to get my little little pen too right now. You know, <laughs> I was not happy with that. Um, No, those are dangerous things when you put stuff like that in a show because then you're going to throw something at the screen and then you have to go and get a new computer and that's no good for anybody and nobody budgets for that. So stop it, show. I don't need that in my life. Yeah, none of that. Bring Artemis (laughs) back as well. Okay, but... Maybe that's why he had to shoo away for this episode is because that wouldn't have happened if he was around. That, you know what? That's probably true. And that, that was probably the most, emo, most emotional part of this act was when Luna said, I understand now who you truly love. Yeah. Oh, um, I know. It was so cute. And she held her and, you know, sweet. Um, did, did you think that he knew that Usagi was Sailor Moon? Because I wasn't sure. I think he did because he, did. he was trying to me- he was trying to hypnotize her from the get-go and just he for was. whatever reason it wasn't working. And he was like, oh, your hair, your buns, just like her. I'm like, that's what we've been saying forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, and 
that yeah for 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 a matter of fact you know it, for whatever reason in this world no one seems to be able to recognize that when they turn into the sailor scouts no one can recognize them i don't know how or why that's the case yeah but it is and so that's a concession of the world whatever um uh, but he goes ahead and he's able to point it out and i feel like this is the type of world where he wouldn't notice if he didn't already know that's yeah I think so. And, you know, um, it was kind of parallel in a weird way when a couple acts ago when Usagi wakes up in his bed Mm -hmm. and she's walking out and she forgets her backpack. Yeah. That was creepy. It it was super creepy. Um, I was almost expecting him to do exactly what he did before because on the first one, you know, he kind of bonked her on the head with her bag and it was really cute. Whereas this, he's like, you forgot your bag. And you're like, run, Usagi. (laughs) Get away, stranger danger. (laughs) She was completely confused. It's completely confused. Um, So this meeting, this chance meeting with him came right right after her meeting with her sailor scouts who i guess they were having a sleepover um they were they were having a meeting they were talking about the sword and the silver crystal and all that other stuff um but i did like how usagi referred to it as a girl's night in yeah that i thought was so and she had all these plastic bags of food which is like oh it's like she's going soggy. to a slumber party yeah yeah i thought that was super cute um and it was revealed basically that so Sailor Venus has a sword. Which is the sword she pulled from the stone in the previous episode. Mm-hmm. And it's revealed that all there's poison pretty much everywhere on their in their kingdom. And yeah, it's kinda it's kinda really sad. Yeah, it's kind of sad that, you know, just all the years of just decay have just seeped into everything that mm-hmm. once was. It's mm-hmm. kind of depressing. And they 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 have a diamond that they they smash rather quick. I didn't really understand that. If you can shed some light for me. Um, I, I'll be honest, I haven't read the manga, so I'm not sure if this was something to go into more explanation for that. But I think it was just to kind of test the, the power of the sword and everything like that because Amy made a point that it was, you know, a diamond is the hardest substance on Earth. And so, and the sword was able to cut through mm. it and smash it to pieces. So that in and of itself is a very powerful weapon. And I I don't necessarily know why you need beads or <laughs> anything else when you have a sword that can cut through diamonds. Yeah. So we had that. They had a little... I thought there was going to be more coming out of that meeting other than that because if, I guess this is going to definitely lead to something in the future, but it didn't really cause any relevancy for this particular act, right? Yeah. I mean, again, maybe it was just kind of to to talk about the sword and about how, again, this how it's kind of poison now, mm-hmm. um, or, or just at least not pure anymore. And maybe they'll have to go through something in order to purify the sword in order to be able to use it later down the road. Maybe maybe that was just the whole point of this particular scene. But yeah, it it didn't really go anywhere. Usagi fell asleep and then snuck <laughs> out, which I don't know how you sneak out of an apartment like that without everybody else noticing. I can't leave my apartment without my roommate noticing. And it's like a beautiful apartment and it's gorgeous, but well, Amy's mom is a doctor. Uh-huh. So <laughs> and Amy's a smarty pants too. Yeah. So the girls notice that they see this encounter with Usagi I, and him. I love that Ray is like, his eyes are red. I don't trust that. I know, she's so, <laughs> so obvious. I'm like, thank goodness for her because no one else really noticed that. I'm glad someone brought attention mm-hmm. to that. <laughs> and I, I don't know, man. Like Ju- Sailor Jupiter going out there while the other girls are out. What she goes to talk to him alone? I don't know if that was a safe idea. Why did it that was, happen? It was a weird. <laughs> it was a weird thing because, you know, they have Sailor Moon going off on her own and them following her. Why would they split up again after that? I don't know why they all wouldn't mm-hmm. just immediately go into the arcade and be like, "Hey, Usagi, we gotta go." And mm-hmm. why split up like that? I guess it's because they had to have someone get hypnotized and it happened to be Sailor Jupiter. Which makes no sense to me because Sailor Jupiter is, you know, on her own. She is so competent mm-hmm. and is fierce and tough. I I don't know why, you know, Sailor Moon would be suscept- would not be susceptible to hypnotism and Sailor Jupiter would be. 
Because they're all just as strong-willed yeah. as each other. So I'm not sure why she would fall prey maybe to that. It's, maybe it's the connection she has. So part of him is protecting her. I don't I don't know. I'm just thinking of different that's, scenarios. That's the only thing I can mm-hmm. think of. The only other thing I can think of is that it was a concession for the story. Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes characters act out of character so that you can get all your chess pieces where they need to be. Yeah. And I don't think that's good writing. But sometimes that's just what happens. No, that's, that happens a lot more often than uh, we'd like it to happen. So. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Get it together, show. But I was, I was okay with Sailor Moon, I mean, Sailor Jupiter being hit, hypnotized. I don't mind that. It's just they didn't do anything with mm. it. Because especially Sailor Jupiter, because she is, you know, she, again, she's such an amazing fighter and, again, so fierce and so strong. And they just knock her out, and then that's it for her for the rest of the yeah, episode. Yeah, she didn't do much. You can except... do so much with a hypnotized Sailor Jupiter. That's true. And they did nothing with it. Yeah. I mean, she just led them into the control room. Yeah, and... for a minute I was like, oh, man, stuff's about to happen. And then it didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she actually like, do you still have your... So they're in the control room, and she's kind of enticing them to show that they have the legendary silver crystal. Mm-hmm. So Sagi brings it out and there it is and all of a sudden the alarms go on and and then yeah she makes she makes a break for the silver crystal and ray knocks her out yeah and then nothing happens with her after that she's just gone like wow ray knocked her out yeah it's not even like she woke back up and started fighting them or or anything Mm -hmm. like that it was just like okay she's knocked out she gets healed with you know that's kind of how i felt with all of them though um they all kind of just got knocked out really easily Mm -hmm. you know and that that was a little tragic uh ray kind of looked like she missed a kick and then got hit and knocked out. which why wouldn't you just light tuxedo mask on fire (laughs) he has a big old cape just light it on fire (laughs) and then he's incapacitated for the rest of the episode well why kick him when you have high heels and fire power <laughs> i just i don't understand <laughs> I, I, I like venus's use of her love chain that was great and i i did like getting to see sailor venus in the fight because yes. i feel like this is the most we've gotten to see her fight yeah um, since she came into the show yeah she really does kind of feel like the, the leader of the scouts in, in a way don't you think well it makes sense because she's been doing this for the longest mm-hmm. out of all of them and she's been on her own for so long doing it she didn't have other people there to back her up yeah so it, it makes sense that she would take charge when Sailor Moon's not taking charge. It's just it, it's just tragic that like they transformed, they you know had beautiful transformations, and like you said, they kind of just got knocked just out like, pretty quick. Okay, they're knocked. Yeah. I will give Sailor Mars credit for being able to do a kick that high. It just wasn't effective yeah, at all. I mean, yeah, I was like, why would she kick him? She is extremely flexible. She has so it was many not a good kick, do. but man, did it get up there. Yeah. Sailor Mercury tries her her um, water power. Yeah, I'll even give her a little bit more credit because she she tried to do something to distract it mm-hmm. while while she tried to go for the crystal, but didn't work out. Nope, it did not work out because ultimately even after Sailor Moon transforms. And let's talk about that a little bit because it took her forever to finally realize, all right, you're hurting my friends. You just hurt my cat. I am going to transform. I mean, I know she's been through a lot Uh and it's a lot to process. But if you're seeing, and and granted, I think we're also supposed to take that the transformations happen very quickly Mm -hmm. and that the big show is just for us as viewers. Um, But yeah, if you're watching your friends transform, fight uh lose the silver crystal and get knocked sideways you should probably do something other than why are you guys fighting and look so estranged and scared and worried so it took her too long for me for her to finally transform so she transforms um she uses her escalation power healing escalation power everyone feels better again but before she can get to prince or tuxedo mask queen barrel comes out I will say that did surprise me. Yeah. I, as as kind of underwhelming as this episode was after how great the last episode was, I was surprised to see Queen Beryl there. I was like, oh, huh. You know, because normally she'll send out her henchmen to go and do everything for her. She doesn't get her hands dirty very often. Just to see her there in the command center, it was like, oh, Yep. Oh, which that's is, happening now. Which signals that it's this is about to war is about to happen. Yeah, and that you know again when 
the enemy is literally at your front gate in your living room, you know, there's no safe haven after yep. that. Yep. It's 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 all hell's gonna break loose and we're gonna see that in the next act in two weeks, right? Is there anything else we wanna talk about for this show? Um, I I just that, you know, things are we know that things are going to wrap up very, very quickly um, because starting in January, we have the next arc coming. Yep. Um, I will be very interested to see how it progresses. Again, because I haven't read the original manga, so I don't know how all of this wrapped up in the original story. Mm-hmm. All I know is that in the original anime, a lot of people died. <laughs> and a lot it was of people died. Heartbreaking. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things progress from there me too and i hope i like um we're kind of going ahead but i hope i do end up liking uh chibi usa because i didn't really like her in the japanese versions but we'll see we'll see um let's talk about some news and gossip because i have Yay. one little snippet I, want to TV news. I don't know if you heard about this i didn't i haven't okay <laughs> megan fox um has said that she would love to play Sailor Moon in a live action movie. What do you think of this idea? I think it's terrible. <laughs> I, I mean, no. <laughs> Please, Megan Fox, do not do this. You already April O'Neil. I managed to accept that, but do not be my little Usagi. <laughs> you know what? I don't think Sailor Moon would be the right choice for her mm. in particular. Maybe someone, I could almost even see her as Sailor Mars. Uh, like if if she was going to be in a live action movie, I could see her more as a Sailor Mars because she, you know, Usagi and Ray butt yeah. heads all the time. So I could see that, and and I actually don't really have anything against her as an actress or anything like that. But I don't think that's right either. <laughs> that, that's what I meant. And I, I mean, I would like to. She could be something evil, like Queen Beryl. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that I would watch that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be fun. But. I'll be honest, I don't know if I could watch a live action Sailor Moon movie. I saw Dragon Ball Z Evolution. Uh huh. And yeah, I saw it. <laughs> it's not worth seeing. <laughs> That's, well, props to you because most people have not seen it. It's not worth <laughs> seeing. Uh, unless you're going specifically to make fun of it, like me and my friends did, it's really oh, not worth seeing. Got it. But I mean, I would like, I don't know because I've even seen a few episodes of the live action Sailor Moon TV show that they did way back in the day. Mm-hmm. I can't get into it for live yeah, it's, action. It's, it's kind of unreal. I, I like the idea of just sticking to anime or yeah, it's style. It's something that lends itself more to animation mm-hmm. than it does live action because the campiness is 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 acceptable. Yes. I feel like when all of a sudden it becomes live action, definitely something of the whimsy uh, and campiness of it is lost and it just kind of looks ridiculous. Yeah, and then you got to like think of the suits and how cool you're going to have to make that look. Everything is just it, it's going to take a lot to make Sailor Moon fans like ourselves happy if that's the case. <laughs> we'll see. And that completes our after show for today. We are going to come back in 2 weeks for the next one act 12 which is going to be about queen barrel and it's funny because it says what did it say oh it said queen barrel but then they misspelled it or something uh it was queen metallia, metallia. is actually the yes, name of the next right. episode queen metallia excuse me it's queen metallia and they misspelled the l and the r i'm like <laughs> oh my japanese people that's what <laughs> happens all the time Anyways, it happens yes it does i love you guys for it just makes me think of japan all right so where can everyone find you uh you can find me on twitter at the Manguin. that's t-h-e-m-e-n-g-u-i-n and i'm also here for the sword art online and z nation after so uh, after shows tonight so after shows <laughs> after after shows whatever they are <laughs> so stay tuned for those stay tuned and check her out and you can follow me at k-a-o-r-i-o-u-s on twitter as well as instagram and you can follow the whole entire after buzz team at after buzz TV and then rate, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in two weeks. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterbuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.